All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another interview episode here on We Create Music TV. I am, of course, your host, B. Vaughn, and tonight, or tomorrow, or whatever time it is that you are going to be watching this interview, I'm excited for this interview tonight. I have with me tonight, mm, let's just say I'm excited about this interview. I had a chance to listen to his mute. Let me just introduce him first, and then we'll get into to all the, the goody stuff of why I'm excited about, about tonight. But we have pop, jazz, Americana, singer, songwriter, and poet, Stephen Blaine with us tonight. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you, B. I, 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 that was one of the best introductions I've ever had. Thank you. Oh, well, wow. All right, well, as long as it, then my job is done. I'm... Okay, I'll see you later. Thanks so much. All right, y'all have an evening. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. No. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so as, as I was saying in, a very, in my intro, I am excited to talk to you tonight. Uh, there is, I'm a, I am a huge fan of music, so I don't subscribe to, even though I may have like a favorite genre, and that's just because that was a genre that I grew up in as a quote unquote singer a long time ago. Uh, but I love all types of music. And so I'm interested in learning more about your music and the meaning behind the music that you've created. Uh, and so we will get into, uh, so I have a whole different, a whole separate section that we'll talk about just your music. But first I wanna know more about Stephen Blaine. So talk to us, how did you, how did you get involved in music? How did you start in this, in this musical world? Well, uh, my, my grandmother stood, it took me to a Knights of Columbus talent show when I was about 10 or something. Mm. And uh, it's when Tom Jones was famous. I remember because uh, uh, Delilah was a hit. You know, my, mm -hmm. my, my, Delilah. So it was, it was a while ago. And um, I, I sang that song. <laughs> I stood oh, up wow. on a table and I sang that song <laughs> and, and people dug it. People dug it, and I was I was screwed from that from that moment on because I like I like the attention, you know, mm. and uh, and then in, in high school I picked up a, a guitar. Uh, my, my my parents bought me a guitar, a nylon classical guitar actually, and um, and then I started, and I played clubs, you know. At, at, before I was eighteen, I I was playing with a, with a band in, in in bar doing cover tunes, you know, uh, early Steely Dan and just just early 70s stuff and uh we we um we were in the uh, in the in the um jersey city bayonne new jersey area so it was kind of it, it was pretty urban mm -hmm. and uh and i had a lot of a lot of friends and, and all kinds of different friends and it was it was really a wonderful uh, place to grow up and and but then the music um i majored in music in college and vocal music uh -huh. okay and, and, uh, and so I got a BA in music education. And then I decided um, I didn't want to necessarily be an educator. Um, I really wanted to be a songwriter. Mm. Uh, but I got sidetracked and, and I auditioned for a show in New York and I got into it. And it was off Broadway and on Broadway. So for a while I thought I was an actor too. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. and, then, and then, but I still wrote songs. I wrote a show. I, I did all this stuff in my 20s. And then I got married, and I and uh, and I had to make a living, so I always made my living uh, in audio. I was an audio oh. producer. I produced I produced audio books before they were in before they were known as audio books. They were books. they were they were cassettes. They were oh, children's yeah. picture books, you know, in the old days. And we made a I uh, had a partner, and we we made a career out of that. And then the technology. You know, you and I were just talking a little bit about the technology. The technology came along and uh, and um, uh, everything got easier to do, but then the prices went down, you know, as what as what happens. So I couldn't make a living doing that anymore after a period of time. But but, uh, you know, we, we struggled through. We raised a family and we had had a beautiful life. And about uh, eight years ago, we moved back into into New York City and um, uh, I decided I was going to do this full time. And pretty much full time. I mean, I still have, I have to earn a living, but right. this is my main thing. And I started writing and, and, and what, 
it's only now after after you know after the beginning of like 15 years in the beginning mm -hmm. uh and and now i've sort of i've sort of arrived at a place where i, I feel really comfortable with with my uh, myself stylistically uh, how i can handle an instrument how i can sing and how i can write i'm at this mm -hmm. weird intersection of uh of i just i feel i feel like i've arrived it's just that there's there's not really uh, there's not anybody waiting for me. So there you right. go. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 in essence, there's there's a a type of freedom, in mm -hmm. in what you're currently doing now, right? So so what you may feel on the opposite end, there really is no pressure that's put on you to fit within a certain box, a certain category. Uh, you know, there's no outside well, pressures. In that capacity well that that's true now remember uh, well when i when i in the beginning my first iteration of my life in the 20s early 30 30s uh i i thought of going to nashville because i i i mm -hmm. wanted to be a songwriter i mean if, if i could go to nashville today with what i can do now if i could go back then with with what i can do now i think i would have been successful mm. back then um, I, I, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't really know my craft that well. And, um, but I didn't go, you know, and so, mm -hmm. so, um, I just, I just think that, um, I, I, I couldn't have done it then. It, it probably wouldn't have worked out mm -hmm. the way, the way it is now. And there's a lot of freedom now because I, if you, if I would have gone to Nashville, I would have been writing country songs. That's, that's what they do. And they're, <laughs> they're great. They're crafted beautifully. There's no... Mm -hmm. I admire the art. I really, really do. It's just that that's changed now um, because mm -hmm. artists write their own stuff as opposed to, you know, the songwriters in a room, which is really right. what I wanted to be doing right. uh, today. And any artist can 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 write a melody and some words and 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 a decent producer and mixer will 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 make that sound awesome. Mm -hmm. you, you know yourself, you can go to garage band, you can slap a few tracks together. It's like, oh, it's not bad. <laughs> You're right about that. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's taken and and even today, uh, you know, I, I, I really struggle with with lyrics. I'm, I'm really conscious of, of every word. Mm -hmm. And um, you, but you can buy a thing, a piece of software that you put in a concept, you know, boy loses girl and it'll spit out lyrics for you. You can. Yes. It, I, I mean, forgot it's crazy. What, I forgot what it's called. There's there's Master one, something. Yeah, there's one that I have yeah. bookmarked. I saw somebody do a video on it and I was like, is this thing real? Let me go check it out. But, and, and but you know yes, what? it's real. But, but, but that, that I think, I think that kids today and, uh, or people that work that way are missing, are missing the point. Mm. You know, the, the point is really to, to go deeper and to, and to find a way to express yourself. And, and but I mean, for me, it's, it's a, it's a totally a hybrid. A, there might be a little bit of truth in what I write, but it's all fantasy and 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 craft, and and I right. I love that. I love that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You know, as, that is, you are so right about the technology today. I mean, imagine this technology, of course, didn't exist 20, 30, 40 years yeah. ago, but with the advent of modern technology, I mean, honestly, songwriters don't really have to write their own songs anymore. They could go right to that website, and I can't remember the name of it, but they can. Go, and if I did, I probably wouldn't give it to nobody. Just write your own songs. But <laughs> <laughs> you can go directly to the website and you're right. You can type in a con and it has predefined concepts for you already. And it's like, oh, is it is it maybe something about this? Oh, if it is, just click that and it'll give you the next line. And then you can actually choose all of the lines you want without physically writing the song yourself. Now, so what fun to, is that? What fun is that, though? I don't get know? it. I don't get it. You know, I, I don't you know? think a lot of people today are really in it for probably what we got in it, you know, because I'm a little older, but I know why I got into music, because it was fun. It was exciting. It was creative. You know, it was it was entertaining. It it, it was a place for, for me specifically that I could escape to. It was kind of like my yeah. own magical, my own magical little world where I can go in and create whatever I wanted to create in this in this world. Now, today, it's not about that. To me, to in my own perspective, it's about how fast can we put out a song and how fast can we get money from it? And right. so, well, yeah. This, you, 
<laughs> you know that that money that money piece. I mean, people who who, who labor under that illusion are, are are they're losers. There's there's a handful of people that make real money, mm -hmm. and everybody else. All right, all right. Maybe you have a good year. You make a few thousand dollars because you got licensed a couple tunes, and you know you did some gigs, right. and yeah, you're paying your rent. But that's there's a big disparity between that and that's that's accomplishing something, mm -hmm. and and, and the, the real money people. Right. Right? right. I mean, it's huge. It's, it's you can't. I see a lot of artists today. There's this thing I was, I was talking to my wife. I, you know, a lot of people do a tour. They tour. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they get their guitar and sometimes they get their partner and they um, they load up their van. And they tour. And I, I've tried and I've uh, in the beginning, uh, beginning for me, uh, that's that's the eight years. Let me put it eight years ago. That my, my second beginning. Um, I, I used to think, well, that's kind of romantic. You know, you, you go into a van and you've got some dates lined up and, and you play your gigs. But from what I understand, what I see is that those dates, there's not a guarantee of any more people than I have here in, in Harlem at 8, 8 p.m. That's right. So, so they call that a gig uh, and it might be at an open mic or it might be somewhere at a coffee shop and that's a gig. And then they'll load up the van and then they'll go to the, to the next location and they'll sleep in the van or a holiday. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the, I, there's no romance in that for me. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> not, you know, I don't, right. I, I mean, that, that's like the last thing I want to be now. Now, if you be said, you know, come to Atlanta, I got, I got, I got a gig for you. I got a house concert. It's going to be 25 people there. You might, we might be able to pay you 50 bucks. Odds are pretty high. I would, I would book that date and I would fly mm -hmm. out there to do the, to do the gig because it, it would be, that would be different. That would be 20 right. people that would listen to me for 45 minutes or, right. or, or 50 minutes with, with that purpose. With that you know? purpose, you know, and, with and that that's, purpose. right. And that's, that's what kind of kills me about open mics and some of those types of yeah. shows like that. It's because a lot of those people really aren't there for you. They, I mean, they, just think about it. There's, and Atlanta is huge on this open mics and those types of gig opportunities, uh, you know. And it's and it's really a lot of pay for play type of environment, you know. So we have so we have a venue that we rented out, and I get it. I understand why they do it. But, you know, we have a, we have a venue that we rented out. We have you know ten artists that are on the lineup, you know. Everybody bring your friends. Here's some tickets. If you whatever you sell, you know, you get the key. But we right, I get the whole the whole thing. But the reality is, is that if I'm an artist and I'm performing at some of these types of opportunities, half of them aren't really there for me. They're really there for their the other 10 artists. Right. Or what, whichever one artist they're there for. And so by the time it gets to me, you know, half of the room is left. Because they're not uh, my real true audience, real true fans. Been there, done that. I did that particular that particular style gig once, and and it was uh, you know it was a, a packager like a, a folk music night or something you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Steve, we'd love to have you as part of that." I said, yeah, great, you know, you got to bring ten people. And I said, "You know, dude, my wife won't That's even it. come out." You know, uh, <laughs> I said, "All right," I, I said, "Well, well, five. You have to. Can you buy the tickets?" You know. So, all right, so I bought the ticket. Yeah, all right, all right. So I showed up, at, and this is at a. At a I'm not going to name the club because I don't want to. I don't want to. They're here in town, and um, uh, I showed up for the <laughs> showed up for the gig, and I was like number number four. So you know, first act goes. You know, everybody, and, and they're all about 18 years old or 19. There, and they've mm -hmm. all got family and friends. This is their first gig, and they so they load up the room as soon as they're done from their 20 minute set. Everybody picks up and goes right. So now. <laughs> That's you right. Know? That's and, exactly what they do. And, and they'll start bullshitting during my set because they're waiting for the next set. So they figure they don't have to pay me any attention. And they'll start, you know, they'll be talking and stuff. And I'll be like, what? Why? What? what? Yes. <laughs> why are you trying to perform? Why did I do that? Right. So that's why I, I, I think I might have mentioned it. I don't want to repeat myself. I, I do play here in Manhattan. I play at um, in Harlem. There are these two incredible clubs, and and um, they are they, they they give you hour an hour set, they pay you a few bucks, two drinks, right? So they mm -hmm. a few bucks, two drinks, you get to do an hour set. 
It might be me. It might be uh, a jazz qu- a trio after me. It might be world music. It's a DJ mm. from 12 until four in the morning. You know, it's, these clubs are awesome. And, but at least they, they don't require you to bring people. Right. So they give you a gig, you show up and do the gig. And if there's three people or 10 people and, and the later hours, place is packed. If you happen to, if you're lucky enough to, to get a slot in there, they usually want a band, but you know, mm-hmm. still, it's really wonderful. These are the only clubs I know of in the whole city of Manhattan mm-hmm. where you could get a gig and you don't have to bring people. I don't right. know any other club for, for, right. for, 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 for what I do. Right. Because most you of the times you got to bring crazy, people. right? <laughs> you got to bring people. That's right. And, 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 and you know, even, even the kids, they're only, that's only good once a year. Your friends are only mm-hmm. going to go to that club one time, that's you right. know, even if they love you, they're going to find excuses right. to not go the second time. That's right. <laughs> so, so, so let, let's kind of switch gears for a moment. Uh, so, so you described your music being in the style of Leonard Cohen, which is a fantastic artist. Uh, Tom Waits, Roy Orbison. And so in what ways is your music different and or similar to those who inspire your style? Well, it's different in that uh, all, all, of, all of my stories are mine, right? Uh, so right. they're different in those ways. But the insights that those artists uh, uh, achieved uh, in relation to their stories um, they, they inspire me. Hmm. You know, I love Tom Waits' stories, uh, the, the noir kind of thing I, that, that totally washed over me. The Leonard Cohen thing with the spiritual connection and, and the, um, and the beautiful crafting of lyrics, hmm. you know, that's just, I, I, I can't, I can't separate myself from that. And then I, I was blessed with, uh, a little bit of a, of a, uh, Roy Orbison, Elvis kind of, kind of sound, you know? Right. B, did I lose you? Oh, they, okay. no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. So, you didn't so, lose me. Uh, it was just, it was just, so, so those three things, and and then you know, any artist that that writes a, a beautiful lyric, mm-hmm. uh, I, I I'm down. I got to be honest with you though, I, and and I listen for them, and I'll and I'll you know I'll try and compile lists on Spotify. There's not a lot of people writing <laughs> meaningful things today, you know. There, there really isn't, and mm-hmm. um, unfortunately. Because I, I would, I would love to, I, I'd love to, you know, you get to know them better, and even, it would be nice if there was, in in my fantasy, I have this illusion of of artists, like me, hanging out in a coffee shop or or a little bar and just bullshitting about our songs, like they used right. to do in the old days with, with poets. Right. But that doesn't exist because everybody is so like narcissistic and into themselves. Mm-hmm. They don't want to. They don't want. They don't want to share. At, right. At open mics, I'll go over to people. I'll say dude, that was really beautiful. And I'll say, thank you. You know, and I'll be that. And there'll be no opportunity for conversation or to talk about anything. They're not interested. You know, God forbid, I would say, you know, next time you, you, you ate the microphone and I couldn't hear a word you said. If I was, God forbid to say that, they would be mad at me. Oh, of course they would. I tried that once, that's right. you know, but who are, I, just to help. Who are you to give me feedback? You know? Yeah, yeah, but that's, that's right. like not even that's not artistic feedback. That's like right. technical feedback. That's, you know? any, <laughs> that's, that's like, anything. You know? Who are you to tell me? You are know? you better than me? Like, why are you telling me? No, like, like I'm trying to help. I'm, you know, it, it, it's so just, sensitive. They don't want it. So sensitive. I don't. Yeah. I don't get it. It's oh gosh. Like, please tell me something I could do to improve myself as an artist. A lot of people do not like that because they think they already have it all together. And I, they, I know. They, Tons of artists, tons of producers, you know, and the ones that I know, I know, I can't per se that they're like that, but I do know a lot that are like that, that like, like the ones that, that I personally know that are connected to me, whether we're acquaintances or friends, I'm going to tell you exactly what it is, but there are people that I've seen and that I do know, maybe not on that personal level, that just don't like to be told anything. Especially, especially well, if they're like a superstar. Oh, don't you can't tell me nothing about about what I do. This is why why I'm special. Yeah. If I'm a star. Oh yeah. I I, I honestly, you know, because I was watching a film uh, uh, yesterday. I, again, I'm not going to name names, and I'm watching the actress, and um, she's she's an icon. But as an actress, she's she's horrible. You know, in this movie, she just <laughs> yeah. she's just. 
she's just horrible. I, I'm sorry. And, right. and um, you know, it's kind of a drag that that we're, we're not we're not about the best mm. of the best. Usually we're, we're it, it's some, we there's there are other be. elements that enter into it. You know, we there's a lot there are other the things. Best. That's right. It used to be. And I crave and, and I'm and I really do miss that. It, it used to be about thinking and getting better and getting right. stronger and becoming stronger at what you do. Now, like, for example, in jazz, that's kind of their ethos. Mm -hmm. so that's a little different uh, because they really do work to become more and more proficient at their instruments right. and they do get really good, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and those clubs, I would love to play in those clubs, but genre wise, I'm not strong enough as a jazz artist. So I mm -hmm. can't, I can't get into those rooms, which is really, they're really the perfect rooms for me. But the owners are not looking for me. They're looking for, you know, straight ahead jazz people. Right. And I don't blame them. That's their model. Right. Uh, but uh, that's uh, that's that's the story with that. So I do mm. admire jazz. And that's why that's creeped in to my work as well. Even though I'm not a, mm. a really wonderful instrumentalist, the, the chords are in my ears and I can play right. them. And so I add them to to my songs. And that 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 lifts me out of uh, out of kind of, kind of puts me into this weird genre mm. um that i don't know we call americana uh we we call it uh pop jazz mm. um sometimes there's there's no label for that it's just folk you know is your option <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> all right uh, uh that's my genre yeah so right. it's hard to hard to qualify right and that was one of my questions to find out how did you get into that genre how did you decide that pop americana or jazz americana was the you know, because most people go, okay, I'm, I'm a hip hop artist, I'm a R&B artist, I'm a jazz artist. You know, so how did you yeah. determine that this was the lane that you wanted to to be in? Uh, it's 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 I didn't I didn't decide to go into a lane. The lane came mm -hmm. to me. Uh, I I just decided to write what please what pleases me. I just mm -hmm. decided to write what I feel. Uh, is is rich and and there's a, there are a lot of pieces obviously that don't make, see the light of day. I mean, all writers have many things that are, they're oh, horrible, yeah, of course, um, uh, and myself included. But I, I know when something gets gets good, and, and I know when it it speaks to me. I, I can self edit really well now. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't mind throwing out lines or concepts or musical ideas, you know. And I and I don't and I don't beat myself up over them. You know, if I can't get it in a day or two, I, I just, all right, chalk it up to didn't work mm -hmm. out, but I'm always, but I'm always on a, I'm on a constant flow of, you know, writing, um, performing. If I can't get a gig in up in Harlem, I'll go to central park and I'll mm -hmm. play at the, um, uh, I'll play in the park and, and with a ukulele and people love that, you know, I'll just do cover songs. And if I can't, and then, and then I'll come back and I'll work on my stuff and then I'll say, well, maybe I'll record, some stuff and when i've got enough tracks then i'll put out an album i just like i just mentioned to you this about this guy in nigeria who just mixed a song mm -hmm. stylistically this is this is i think the genre is edm is that mm -hmm. is that that's a genre uh, right yeah, edm that's Electric, that's kind of like where this music. it's kind of like where this falls and it mm. just i just heard it and i realized it and and he mixed it and it really does it's pretty cool it's pretty cool you know for me but but I, that's I allow the music to take me. I don't I don't restrict it. Mm. That's good. I like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I like that you allow the music to take you. You don't restrict it. Right. So wherever the music decides to lead is where you is where you go. Yeah. You know, you know my wife's in, my wife is an author. And so she says the same thing about when she's writing books, you know, when she's defining her characters, she's like the characters, mm -hmm. the characters will tell me how they need to be written. I don't yeah. define how the characters are written. They will tell me. And I remember when she was writing her first book that she was struggling with one of the characters. And she was like, because I want this character to, be, to do this and be this. And the character came back and said, no, that's not how I am. And the, character, right. and the character revealed herself. And she was like, oh, okay. And after that, the story was so much smoother. The character development was Absolutely. so much smoother. Well, that does make sense. And you know, I, in, in a funny way, I think that's what separates commercial work versus artistic work, mm. because you know, you, you you if I were in Nashville, I would be writing because an artist is going to be recording an album next week, 
and she's looking for a cut about the stars. Mm -hmm. So you would be working with a concept or with something like that or with an artist in mind. And, and um, I, but your wife and I don't do that now. Right. I mean, look, look, if I got an assignment, if somebody said, you know, go I write mean, a song like in that stuff, I, I would do it. But, right. you know, as a, as a, as a, you know, as a path, I don't, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's right. I yeah, mean, I did, I, the, I did that as an audio producer for when mm -hmm. I, when I, when I was working in that career as an audio producer, the clients told me what they wanted. The clients told right. me the music didn't, they didn't like the music or, or, or they did like the music. And then I, it was up to me to conform that to the client. I'm the client now. That's right. But I like to think with a high degree of self editing capability, like mm -hmm. I can also be my own client and I can say that really sucks. Mm -hmm. Or this, this is interesting. This is interesting. I think interesting is, is a, is an indicator of let's keep moving. Right. That's right. You know, something is interesting. Mm, yeah. That's right. So, so speaking of, of, of something interesting, um, I learned something about yourself uh, as I was doing my research yeah. uh, and reading about about you. Uh, so during the pandemic, uh, you started to to journal your own experiences. Uh, so what did you learn from doing that journaling? What experiences? It's going to sound weird the way I'm going to say it. What experiences did you experience? <laughs> And how did well, those I experience? No, no. <laughs> well, you, you know, it's funny. It, it, it is funny. It, it, it seems like it's so long ago, mm -hmm. and yet it's not. I mean, I just had COVID last week for the first time. Uh, that's how. That's what a crazy world we're living in. Uh, and it was. Oh, wow. you know, thank God it was. It, it was mild. Right. You know, but I've gone two and a half years without COVID. With you know, I got all my shots and all that. Um, but when when this thing hit we were all lost. We were all lost. New York was sirens were going day and night and we were scared out of our minds uh, before the, before the rifts happened with the masks, you know, before that really, it was, right. it was, everybody was scared. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I was going to write a song a day. And, and I did. And I actually, I, they're on, I think they're on um, one of my, I've created a playlist with, I went to the park and I would do 60 second songs. I would just do, you know, I remember when they were beating up Fauci for something and I, I did something like that. I remember when Trump talked about hydroxychloroquine, I did a song about that. You know, I, did, I did all these, all these reactions because to me, everything was crazy. crazy. I, maybe to you, I don't know. I, no, I, you're I, right. But, you're right about that. You know, and everything was, everything was like, what, you know, so I put it in a song and it, it, it helped me feel better. And when I posted it, you know, I got a few comments. People liked it. They thought it was good. Of course, there was always pushback from somebody. Well, you know, we love Trump. You know, whatever. You know, crazy right. crap. And, and um, um, but I did that. And one day I was, uh, I I was recording myself um, around the the reservoir in Central Park. You know, there was nobody there. Literally, I was holding up a, a, a thing, and a woman walks by, and she's. Can, can, I, can I, can I, can you say that again? You know, as I sang, uh, I said the lyrics and she was a writer for the Atlantic. Mm. And so she, she took my lyrics and put it in her article. And that was, oh, wow. that was, that was a high bar for me and, and during the COVID <laughs> that she, that she put my lyrics in, in there. And, um, uh, but that's, that's what I did. I did it. I did it really to, uh, as, as a survival mechanism because, you know, there was nothing then there was not going to be any gigs we all didn't know what was happening. There was no vaccine. Remember, we were we were we were like we were screwed, completely <laughs> screwed. We we think right. about it. We we were just in this completely lost place. And so that was a reaction for me to mm. to to do that. And when I look back on it, I, I, there's only a couple songs that kind of kind of were were, were went beyond just just anger and, and the reaction. Right. I wrote this one song, uh, this old man, he's 92. What's he worth to me and you? Uh, from the point of view of a healthcare worker going to a, 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 a um, going to a, um, a nursing home. Like a nursing home. And having a, and, and look at this old guy who was just left alone in the hall. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? Right. Yeah. You know what these people went through? That song, that song, that was a step, a step up and, and it, it sounds good and it still holds up. And I, and 
I also, for all those songs, I didn't really produce them. It was literally just whatever came out, mm -hmm. you know, with guitar or ukulele and, and vocal. And that was really fun. Right. Yes, I bet. It. I bet. I have a friend yeah. in, uh, in St. Louis who kind of, he, pretty, he sort of did the same thing uh, in that respect. Mm -hmm. um, so he wrote, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the, the actual album he came out with. He, he actually did a, a, an entire album. And mm -hmm. he wrote the songs, shot music videos to it, released the songs and the music videos to it. He has a song uh, called Six Feet. And so in this in the song, he's, he's talking about you need to stay six feet away from me. Like, why are you so close? That's right. And uh, he has a song Amen. called um, uh, uh, Where Your Mask At. And so, like, why are you not wearing your mask? You know, you're you're part of the reason why everybody's getting COVID because you're not wearing a mask. But <laughs> yep. So so he yep. wrote all these different songs and shot different music videos to them uh, as his expression uh, of dealing with with the pandemic. Uh, and and he, he was on the news for it. Uh, they brought him into uh, the news station to talk about uh, his songs uh, and the videos that he made. And yeah, I, I thought it was just I thought it was amazing how he I mean, he's just a creative person in that capacity anyway, uh, but he took something like the pandemic and transformed it into creatively into music and actually released an album with music videos and everything. I was cool. like, look at this. Cool. Yeah. No, cool. I, not me. And it helped, but... <laughs> helped get him through too. It helped get him, get him through that, that, that panic yeah. time. That's right. So, yeah. So I, I, I thought that was great. So, so your songwriting, I want to start getting into some of your music. Uh, but before I do, I want to talk about your songwriting. And, and I wrote my question like this. Your songwriting is very intriguing. What, what's, what's your secret to writing such wonderful, intriguing songs? What's the secret? Well, I, you know, it, it's, it's take, I, I mean, I've got, at this point, more than 50 years of experience. Uh, if I, you know, because like even when I was, wasn't doing this full time, I've always made my living through, through audio and I've, and I've, I've written music, I've, I've scored things, I've scored children's books and I've written music. And, um, um, the, the thing about for me is, is, is the craft. I, I love to just, um, get a title, get an idea. I start with a title, usually, mm -hmm. uh, and, and if I and if it's a good one, I can go with it, and I can I I, I can realize it because I won't let it go, but but often there is no title, so uh, I mean like this sign sure to subscribe. I might say subscribe. I might sit down and say, subscribe. What can I where can I get off that? All right. Well, then I'm going to do a list. I want to I want to sign up to be part of. I want to subscribe to your love. I want. I, I mean I don't know, but I, mm -hmm. I I might I might just just riff on that for a while and something might evolve from there and mm. then and then uh, if i if i get a rhyme scheme it, it might feel it might feel country or it might it might feel wow i could i could i can throw some jazz some jazz chords on that you know i, I can i can make it i can i can you know um, you know something there's something about it and, and i can harmonize it or i can pick up the guitar um, I've got this new little classical guitar that's, that's uh, tuned a little higher than a regular guitar. It's, it's kind of fun mm. and everything, everything gives me ideas. And, uh, once again, I quote my wife, all it takes is time <laughs> for me. So I just, I just, you know, I, I make the time. I'm very selfish about my time though. Mm. at this stage of my life. I'm mm -hmm. very, I try only to do things I want to do. That's right. I am very selfish with my time. I am the same yeah. way. I am very selfish with with it. I don't want to do yeah. anything unnecessary. Anything that's going to no. sort of take me away from what my mission or goals are. I yeah. I, I when I was younger, I didn't really care about time at all. I got all the time in the world. But now as I'm getting older, it's like, no, I want to make sure that my time is used and executed well. I don't want anybody to come waste it. So in the end, now or anything well, and, and to I, waste it. Don't you? You would probably agree that the past two and a half years have had an effect on, on that, on that, you know, strategy. Oh yeah. Of course. You see how precious. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. You can say that. 
No, I mean, you see how precious, I mean, I've lost, uh, we've lost people and it wasn't mm. necessarily even the COVID. That's the, the kicker, mm. you know, um, but, but we've lost people. And, mm -hmm. and then you, and then you think about, wow, it, it, I, I don't know what it is about this time that allowed us more time to process that or, or because of all the other people dying. Um, but it just makes life really, really a precious and, and we, we value, we value, at least in my family, we, we value things uh, maybe a little bit more intensely than we used to. Um, and that, and that affects my work. I, I don't want to be distracted. I'll, I'll throw tantrums if I can't get my time. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll you know, I'll be obstinate and whiny. And, and, yeah, you me know, too. Like, I, yeah, I'd have, like, oh, you got to do that. Oh my gosh, really? You know, I'd rather just stay and kind of do <laughs> And and my my wife is very adventurous, and she always wants to go oh. out and do things. Let's get the, your wife and my wife together and let them go. We can hang out yeah, and do right, our work. Right. And so she's super adventurous. She's like, hey, do y'all want to go walking in the mountains on the weekend? Nope. Because on the weekends, I want to edit this video. I want to make this song. I want to do. I don't want to do anything else. And it's like my time is 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 precious. So I don't want to do anything that's going to take me away from anything that I actually want to do. You know, but in saying that, I want to spend all the time I can with, right? In case she's watching. No, it's it's absolutely true. Though. <laughs> I want to spend all the time with her that I can, but I also right. covet the time that I have to do the things that sure. I want to do. Um, and so yeah, and so I didn't even I didn't know he was sitting at a piano, y'all. So you know how, you know how that goes. Yeah, once, once I'm I all find set it, up. I, I'm all set up here. I can I can. Yes. I can. I do. I do a lot of online open mics now. So, oh, whenever I drop, I'll, I'll, I might log into a poetry open mic and mm. and uh, you know I'll hang oh. out for forty five minutes or whatever and do a couple tunes. I do a tune, mm -hmm. and it's they gave, love me. You just gave me an idea. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What? So yes, you just gave me an idea. Maybe. Okay. Why can't Why can't we create music TV? Do an online concert series. We can why do can't that. you? We can. Why can't we you? Can. We can. That's. Yeah, see, I love well, put, when put me down, put me down on the list, right. please, put me down yes, on the list for sure, absolutely. And I'm gonna tell everybody why because we're gonna move into talking about the reasons why, and maybe he'll give us a taste of each one of these as we talk about each of these different songs. I have some other questions, but I'll come back to those. I want to talk sure. about some of the music. So before I get into now, so so before I even get into talking about this one particular album. Let it be known that he's released six. No, wait. You you got to correct me if I'm wrong. Something like this that. One, seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight. Uh, some, it's the, something like that. Yeah, right? the Jewish music stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but I specifically I want to talk about the Met. That's your latest album. Yeah. So, thank you. and as I was listening to it, this is what I and I'm going to read you what I wrote down. Right. And then I want to, so let me talk about how I want to do this. I'm going to read to you first what I wrote down. Then I want you to talk about the album. And then I want to talk specifically about some of the songs and the meanings behind the songs. And if you want to give us a preview, you know, I'm always down for previews of stuff. Um, but this is, this is what I wrote. Uh, the Met is a very high quality and well executed album. All the songs flow seamlessly together a cohesive body of work with great, rich vocals, amazing instrumentation and composition within a 1940s flair. That sound about? That's, sound that's, about right? it's, it's beautiful. I, I, from the heart, I'm, I'm just, um, it, it, it's, it's you, as an artist, it's so validating to have anybody say something like that to you. I, I mean that. Just, just, and, just to give you... Uh, you know something just to, just to state the obvious is even, <laughs> is even good <laughs> and see and see for me i i don't listen to pop jazz americana i i'm a, mm. i love r and b I, I like hip i like hip hop i love r and b because i grew up as a, everybody knows watching this show i grew up as a singer i've been in several groups in choir and high school all that stuff right so i'm always attached to old school r and b and Music and new school R&B music, like Boys to Men. Oh, I don't know if they still new school, but I'm just saying. I'm a huge Boys to Men fan. But when I listen to the Met, 
I was like, oh my gosh. And that's what I said in the beginning. I am a fan of music. So I love classical music. I love, uh, if, it's, if it's a great body of work, I like it. And I yeah. believe that that's what this album is. So wow. let's talk about the it's meaning beautiful. behind the name of the album, The Met. Okay. Well, uh, the the Met. The reason I I chose that is uh, it's it's a it's a it's a sweet little story song, and um, the Met happens to be uh, literally about ten blocks away from me, and and I'm and I'm a member, so that means that with my little card, I can go in any time, and for ten minutes or or an hour or two hours or whatever I want, and walk around and see some of the greatest art on the planet. I can look at Gauguin, I can look at Picasso, I can look at Monet. I could wander through Egypt, I could look at the knights and the conquistadors, I could you, uh, I, I could go to ancient Africa. <laughs> you, you name it. Wow. And, and it's it's all it's all in this huge building. And um I I I love I love New York. It's a little dicey now, I'll be honest with you. It's it's tough here. It's tough, okay. man. There's a lot of stuff. Somebody stole my catalytic converter from a 2007 Honda. I mean, wow. I'm talking, I'm talking really low stuff, wow. you know. Uh, but, but this, this is still, this is still the best place for me on, mm -hmm. on the planet. And and when I go to the Met, I just feel better. Mm. And I don't have to go for long. Right. But I'll just look at some beautiful art, and I'll be wow. I'll be transfixed, and I'll say wow. And I get inspiration and, and good feeling. So that's that's why I named the album The Met. And um, um, yeah, would you like me to play a little bit of, of, of The Met for you? Sure. Or is that something you? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I'm no. looking at it. Oh, no. I'm all about if you, when somebody's sitting at the keys and stuff, yes. Let's meet at the Met by the bust of Pompeii. Wander through ancient Rome, then move on to Marseille. We can view the pastels and the art of Monet. So meet me at the Met. We'll wander through Egypt, she has her own way. With mummies and portraits and jewelry. Where the temple of Dendur is a beautiful thing So meet me at the Met the Horses and knights are posed for a run With muskets and shields in the blistering sun And their helmets and armor weighed about a ton And the battles were bloody and wet Let's meet at the Met by the bust of Pompeii We can look at some iconic art on the way To the medieval hall where the tapestries stay On a day we will never forget At the Met, at the Met Let's meet at the Met Let's meet Let's meet At the Met It's the Met. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that is awesome. I, I definitely enjoyed that song when I heard it. I was like, oh, wow. But now there's more context to it, right? There's more context to it as far as the physical building of the Met and all the things that it has inside. So let's meet at, at the Met. That's, that's one. And, and those, all those things, all those things are, are there. I mean, when you walk in, there's this, this bust of Pompeii. <laughs> You know, there he is, and then and then there's the medieval hall that's dark, mm. and there and my the tapestries are there on the walls. You've seen that? You've been there? No, no, yeah. my son will love that. <laughs> oh, you? Oh, your son? Your son will? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And oh, then yeah. there's this wing. Oh yeah. No, what about your son? Yeah. No, no, I was gonna say he he wants to move to New York, so. That's oh. It. So in the next year or so, a couple of years, whenever that is, whenever that happens. Uh, he, mm -hmm. New York is where he's coming, so or where he's going. Cool. But yeah, 
Well, he's going to love it. He probably wants to live in Williamsburg, though. I mean, no, no, no. or Lower no, East no, no, Side. No, no. no, he wants to live in one of the, the boroughs, I guess. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, type it in the chat. I know you're on here. Brooklyn. But no. <laughs> but <laughs> I do know he wants to move to New York. I'm not exactly sure where he wants to live in New York, but he does want to uh -huh. move to New York. I mean, he's an author. So he's a young, he's a young writer. Cool. Uh, and so he wants to make his stamp in the writing world and New York is the place. So we well, see even for him now, and I, and I think about that, if I were a young writer and I was going to move to New York, I would want to find other writers like me that I could sort of hang out with, mm -hmm. you know, like, and have a drink or, or, or a coffee and, and maybe a weekly meeting or, or a zoom online or something right. like that. Uh, because I, I, I just would sort of, that, that, that creates a camaraderie and, and sort of an affirmation that, that you're heading in, in, in somewhere that people respect you. That's for. right. And, and I you think know? he started doing some of those because he has online groups and things like that. But no, that's another conversation for another Okay. Day. All right. Well, right. we talked about the Met. Well, yes. Uh, well, so the, if he needs a tour, I, I'm, the, I'm the man. If, if he wants to hit me up, I'm happy to take him around in different hoods. I, 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 I love this town. I could be a tour guide. Perfect. Yeah, because he New York is where he's going. So uh, from cool. Atlanta to New York. So <laughs> right. okay. So the next. So there, I have four songs that I would like to talk mm -hmm. about specifically. Okay. Uh, and so, what's the meaning behind each of these different songs? Uh, and then, if you want to give okay. us a, a preview, I'll leave that completely up to you. Okay. Uh, but the first song is "Day After New Year's Eve," and what I wrote here in in my little brackets on my notes, I said it was like a Frank Sinatra-ish type of vibe as I'm listening to uh, Day After New Year's Eve. Is, is that kind of, would you say yay or nay or? Yeah, I mean, it's totally, it's totally Sinatra-ish. Um, you, you, you know, it, it really, it really is, um, we we romanticize New Year's Eve because we just do. We 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 go we watch movies. You know, if you look at uh, when Harry met Sally and and some of these uh, these films that in, intrinsic in our in our culture, it, it's it's the highlight of, of of the year. You know, and and um, I don't know. I I was I was reading something provoked a thought. What happened? But well, what happens right after New? The ball drops, right? The ball drops and everybody clears out. Now you've got all the people got to clean up after mm -hmm. that. Uh, the, the, all the cats that were hanging out in Central Park, they got to run to a bathroom because they've right. got to pee desperately. You know, and, and um, you know, you got to go back to work uh, either, either the next day or the day after. You know, so it, 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 you, you, you climax at this thing and then you just fall, fall down. Mm -hmm. So I thought that would be a, a, a fun concept to explore mm -hmm. that's that's where that that's where that's where it came up day after new year's eve the new year is getting old the thrill is already gone and the weather is freaking cold and i wanted to use freaking you know i didn't want to say fucking that was too harsh Right. But freaking felt right, you know. The day after New Year's Eve, the holiday bills come due. The traffic's like before, and one more year is through. Now, I know I wanted to, because the melody was very mid-range. Now, I wanted something that was kind of toppy that would, that would really bring it home. And then I went, New Year's Eve can be a slice of heaven when you spend it with someone you love. And there's a B flat. And you count up to 12, which this I thought that was clever. You count up to 12 from 11. Usually people are counting down. That's what New Year's Eve should be made of. Now, we need a little instrumental. Then I went back to the chorus. Da, da, da. 
slice of heaven when you spend it with someone you love and you count up to 12 from 11 that's what new year's eve should be made of now now the the, the capper the day after new year's eve what i love you so much i know i'm making a resolution tied in new year's eve to never let you go simple short and sweet and one one of my one of my favorites of my songs thanks for, I, for noticing that <laughs> yes yes you know that, that is a that is a great that is a great song that's why i said it had like that uh, sinatra ish type of vibe uh, it just took me back to that that feeling that sinatra would give you when when he was seeing uh the ballads that he that he sang so yeah absolutely you so, know he, he, he and he and tony bennett that, that well i mean mm -hmm. i don't mention them but i'm greatly uh influenced by by him and yeah. and tony bennett and and uh, and ella you know mm -hmm. so much so now that when i when i sing uh when i when i sing with a band it's one thing we all have to be locked into a groove right, right. but when, uh, so you can't just stop like i was doing with you uh right now and explaining things i don't go that far when i do a solo but the tempos change. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't lock into a tempo all the time. When I have a song like this, I, I, I'll slow it down and I'll make sure that the words are out there. Right. Just something I learned from them. Mm -hmm. They they wanted you to know the story. That's right. That was their that was Sinatra's main thing, man. And, and uh, I don't people don't sing that way today. It's it's all about patter 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 more speed 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 right. speed you know speed get more words in you know it's like <laughs> yeah so that's right well yeah, yeah I I definitely enjoyed day after New Year's Eve when I heard it thank you I was like wow thank this you is a beautiful song. appreciate it so the thank next you. song this song was a surprise I I, yeah. I kid you not I'm sitting there I'm preparing for the interview I'm listening to to the song I'm writing my notes and doing things and all of a sudden I hear. I hate her. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and as I'm listening to it, Caught I'm you, like, huh? as I'm listening to it, I'm like, oh, dang. Like, he don't really like you. He hates you. Oh, gosh. Like the stuff he said. I... <laughs> it, but it made, me right. stop what I, it made me stop what I was doing and actually listen to what you were saying. I'm going, oh, wow. Why does he hate her so much? But I'm sure there's more meaning to I hate her. So I'll let you talk about the concept behind that. Well, song. you know, it's funny. This this song, uh, this is one of those songs that just sort of hung out for a couple of years. I, I wrote it, I completed it, and and then I, I, I didn't record it, I'd say five or six years ago, uh, at least. And, and um, because I was I was trying to find my voice and I, I thought then that was more Americana guitar rhythm stuff, you know, mm -hmm. a country Americana, you know. So I, I, I pushed this aside. And then when this album, I was looking for, uh, for other things, I said, oh, wow, this, this is really strong. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I love that opening line. I hate her because, because really what I'm saying with that line is, is I love her so much. Mm -hmm. I don't hate her at all. I, I hate that I love her, you know? And, and so I let that develop. You know, I, mm -hmm. I hate her. I hate her. She's a hangover on Sunday. She's a drive. What else could be bad about her? She's a drive to work on Monday. Back in the days when we, when we drove. Oh, how I hate. Now we're, now, we're, now we're getting to the truth. Oh, how I hate the way she sighs. What? I hate her. I hate everything about her. Back to that. Oh, how I rue the day I found her. Oh, how I hate, dead giveaway here, her dreamy eye, dreamy eyes. And I don't miss her heart. 
honey lips Her tender kiss Or the love that we knew That I could ever doubt her. I hate that I can't live without her. How I hate her. How I do. So you get out of there that I hate her and I, and I screwed up this relationship. <laughs> you know, I screwed it up. I doubted her. I did something screwy. I, I left, whatever I did. Um, but I can't live without her. Mm. I'm so screwed, you know, mm. and I hate her for all those things. All those things. That's, uh, so that, that, that really worked well for me. You know? That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. As soon as I heard it, I was like, I hate her. I was like, okay, let me see why. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> So I'm sure there's more to this song, so we're gonna find. I out. wish I get Michael Bublé to listen to me. I, w I wish I could just, you know, you know, because uh, he's the main guy now. You yeah, know, that's he's like the main guy. That's like a Michael Bublé type of of vibe and feel. So that's I something he get would to do him. too. And we're gonna get to Michael. I Bublé. can't get to him, Michael Bublé. I've tried. I've yeah, tried everything I know. If he would listen <laughs> to a couple of my tunes. I know he'd want to do something. You know? Of course, yes, yes. Okay, so the next song. This song, to me, as soon as I heard it, I immediately thought, Kill Bill. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I immediately thought about the movie Kill Bill. I was like, wow. Why am I thinking about Kill Bill? And I could just imagine like a fight scene. This song being played to like a fight scene. And the song is, She Danced Like an Angel. Wow, isn't that something? Right. Isn't that something? That was, you know, that was one of those, that was one of those ditties I just threw off one, one night. Um, I just. Because it had that bass. I, it had that bass in the, in the beginning. And I heard it and I was like, oh, I can see this being played at like, at like a Kill Bill battle. Yes. Yeah. I mean, for me, for me, the the, the song, the the special musical quality in this song, uh, she danced like an angel on a cloud. That that little halftone thing, that's what made it for me. Uh, I had this guy, um, this musician acquaintance. His name is Will, and uh, he put in that guitar, bloom, mm -hmm. uh, the bass and the the drums. That's all me. He just he did that that cool guitar thing, which really made the song, mm -hmm. and. Um, um, I, I just, I had this image of looking at this, this beautiful dancer and I just, I just expanded on it. And, um, and, um, and then I, I had the, the idea that, you know, I'm never going to see that girl again, that woman again, that dancer mm -hmm. again, she bowed and then she left town. She's right. now they're, they're moving. It's a, it's a, it's a company moving on to the next, the next town. But the beauty of this dancer um, it just just was was thrilling. Mm. So she danced like an eight. Let me do a little bit. Sure. <laughs> Are you... She danced like an angel. She danced like an angel She danced like an angel On a cloud She moved to the music She moved to the music She moved to the music All around She wore a dancer's tights Wore a dancer's shoes. She likes to tap to jazz and shuffle to the blues. She danced like an angel. She danced. 
dance like an angel She dance like an angel Then she bow She dance like an angel And she left town It's a simple, just a simple so a song, but the image of a dancer and an angel are, 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 were very strong for me. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I literally you. You noticed Stephen, as soon as I, as soon as I heard, I heard that bass line and all of a sudden it felt like I was watching a fight scene and kill Bill with all wow. the blood and That's the gore and the guts and everything flying around. But <laughs> It was the it was the it's it's the uncanny marriage of that type of scene with that type of song, and you wouldn't yeah. expect those two to be together. But it it in my head it flowed so well together. I was like, oh wow, How like, cool. look at this! It's like a kill. It, wow. it had like that. It had. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, when you go check out, go check out the album. Of course, right? He'll tell you where you can get it in just a couple of minutes. But when you listen to that song, tell me if you don't get a Kill Bill vibe from that song when you're. That's a great go compliment. Back, Thank then you go back and watch Kill Bill, and you're gonna be like, "That's the perfect <laughs> song for it, right there." Yes. Well, if only we could. I could get. Uh, what's his name? What's that director? Uh, oh, Quentin Tarantino. Very prominent. Yeah, Quentin. Yeah, Quentin. Tarantino. Yeah. I wish I played with those people. I wish. I wish they were in my circle of friends. Wouldn't that be great? Couldn't you imagine? Wouldn't that be cool to hang out with <laughs> Quentin and? Uh, uh, and 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 all these guys. And I'd like to explore his head. Blue and, and you know, yeah. I, I know he's. I know Tarantino just has the craziest ideas. His movies be. I bet. His movies be movies that are just movies you wouldn't expect, like Reservoir Dogs yeah. or um, yeah. Kill Bill Volume One and Two or the Django or I mean I could go name so many Pulp Fiction. Well, like they were just iconic. Well, he's an artist. But he, and he's See, an artist, he, he's right. he's an artist. He's different than the other directors. You know, the, the ones that are doing the Star Trek and stuff. They're great right. directors. Don't get me wrong. But Quentin is uh, he's, he's a real artist. He 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 likes to he likes to, to he likes to roll. He likes to fly, mm -hmm. he, you know. He, and, yes. You know. Yeah. Yes. And he never went it's to true. film school. So that's what I like also. Well, that's but. the other thing, <laughs> you know, so, so much for school. Don't get me started on that. All these kids spending spending hundreds of grand of the uh, you know to, to go to NYU and, and do film school. I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> you, know? you know, which is yeah. so crazy because I heard they don't even touch an actual camera until their last year, which is. But but I'm going to film school to learn how to be a film director or a cinematographer. Yeah. But I'm not touching cameras. But anyway, that's a different. Well, NY, NYU owns all of Lower Manhattan, and Columbia owns all of Upper Manhattan. They've got so wow. much money, they don't know what to do with it. Right. It's pretty crazy. I bet. Yeah. I bet. And so yep. there is there is one more song though. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> this song, as soon as I heard it, I was like it, and I never, I am not a uh, a person who likes who goes to now my younger days. I did. But I don't really go to clubs or bars and things like that. But if I did, this song took me, put me in a place like I was in a in a late night jazz bar. Immediately, it's like I could just see the ambiance and the atmosphere of a late night jazz bar. Stephen Blaine sitting at a piano, singing, in my lonely place. Oh, in this oh. in this atmosphere. Yeah, I was like, wow, yeah. and it and it immediately put me into that type of type of mood. Well, I'm I'm glad I'm glad it had that. That's the desired effect. So I'm glad you're glad it. There I'm glad go. it worked. Um, that that I that was a that was a new that was a new right. I mean, you know, in the mm -hmm. past year, and and um, I, I you know, see, I like I like the way I always love these two chords, and these are. These are American songbook chords. That's like, that is a standard thing. In my lonely place, in my lonely room, 
staring into space a sinatra too plays romantically on an old lp in my lonely place in my lonely place at the cusp of dawn once again i wake once again you're gone like each night before gone without a trace in my lonely place yes i have regrets i can't deny there's never been a fool such as I am through my lonely night. Moonlight casts its glow while the snowflakes drift to the streets below. And forever I'll never let you go. You'll be wrapped in my embrace in my lonely place yeah i wanted to paint a picture I yes. to, thank you i wanted to paint a picture and and, and i think uh, if you if what you said is means I, I painted it okay. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I can imagine sitting in that late night jazz bar as you're sinking at, looking over at my wife, holding her hand. You know, it's yeah. It just you accomplished your mission with this particular whatever your mission was with the album. I think you accomplished it. So, like I said, thank this you. album was very cohesive from the beginning to to the very end. I think that every song was just just composed and song written amazingly. Uh, and you don't really hear that. So when you hear a, an album that has that, you're like, oh, oh, wow. You know, because we hear we hear so much music. We hear so many different things going on. And, and you know, so and, and, and of course, you know, as human beings, we are subjective. And so we can hear something. Oh, that's great. But it's to me, it may not be to somebody else. It may be. But when I heard your body of work just in this album, I was like, wow. This, and like I said, I am not a pop, jazz, Americana. I don't, that's not the genre I listen to. But I would listen to that album because it's well, a great piece of music. Yeah, so I, I, I thoroughly you know, B, if there's one, if there's just one song, some somebody comes away from from all my work. That's that's a great honor. I'll be honest with you. So thank you, thank you for for saying that. And and I also will say. As much as you you think you would enjoy sitting in a bar late at night, um, listening to that, I can only tell you that I would enjoy it even more than you. Mm -hmm. If I could find, if I could get a room that would let me play a couple sets at midnight, you know, and mm -hmm. just do that with an upright bass player, I mean, you know, come on. Oh God, that's that's oh. like heaven. Right, it's heaven for me. But there's, I can't get those play, I can't get those gigs, you know. So oh, well, we it's such a drag. A we got to find a way to make that I know. I know. Let's I would go. love that gig. Yeah. I would love that gig. Because yeah. if people heard those, and, and, and that's the thing, people are so, so caught up on age, right? You have a great body of work. And you said it in the beginning, well, they're not, you know, they won't look this way because I'm a little bit older. Man, screw that. The, the songs are amazing. And if we just if we Thank really you. love the songs more than we love the image, then I think that we'll be in a better place musically in our profession. So, thank you, B. Thank you so much. Yeah. This has been uh, this is the, this is the best interview I've ever had. Ah, thank you, <laughs> thank, I and I mean that. I mean that. <laughs> Thanks for letting me talk. Uh, uh, yeah, I sure. Also, it's also good for therapy. Do I have do I have to send you a check for this, or, or no, is sir. this like uh, no, nope, <laughs> <laughs> nope. So I do have two more questions for you. Uh, sure. So the first question for you is, what was the most impactful moment in your career? Wow. 
Wow. Uh, I, well, I, I want to say I, 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 I uh, auditioned for this, this, uh, this thing. I can't go into specifics, but, uh, but I auditioned for this thing, and there was a couple hundred kids there. Um, and this was six or seven years ago. And um, I went up there with my guitar, and I sang a kind of a spiritual thing that I wrote called I Confess. And I was looking for affirmation that I was, that I was a good, good writer. And, um, and I sang that song, and you could have heard a pin drop at the end of it, and then they, they all applauded. And, and, I, and I, I remember like a tear came to my eye because I understood that I really touched them with, with that lyric and with that song. Uh, that, that was, that was kind of life changing. It made it, it, you know, it said to me that I'm, I'm doing the right thing. And, and I've, I've, you know, I haven't looked back. I get frustrated, but I, there's nothing else I can do now. Now I'm, now I'm really stuck. I just, this is it. But I, that for me, that was, that was a pretty important moment artistically. Mm. Uh, when, when, you know, we all look for affirmation, no matter what, I think what we're doing, we all want to be affirmed as, you know, just nice people or, or professionals in what we do. And for me, uh, this, this, this is my craft. And I, and I, I, it might be hard to believe for some people, but I really do work at it, you mm -hmm. know? So, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm. Good, good. Yeah. It is, it is a craft. It is something that you work at. It is something that you, you develop, uh, and that you get good at. Uh, that you practice and you progress within it, uh, you know, and it takes time. And a lot of times people don't think it takes time, but it, oh gosh, it truly does. So, well, you know, the thing is, 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 uh, as, as we get older, we do accumulate experiences that become more interesting than, than the experiences we had when we're, when we're really young, which are, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're different. You know, uh, when you when you come to things uh, in a youthful from a youthful perspective, uh, it, it's it's like it's like raw energy, you know. Right. But later on, you have a chance to really think about things a little bit more in depth, and 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 with that comes the opportunity to describe those things, and um, that's probably part of the reason why, you know, the, more, the the stuff that that's more that's been around a long time doesn't necessarily connect. With, with the younger kids because they're looking for a different kind of affirmation. They're looking, mm -hmm. they're looking for stuff really fast right now. I mean, right. Real, I mean, look at, look at TikTok and Insta. I mean, and it's like, uh, it, instantaneously, instantaneous. you know, um, and it's, and it's, um, it, it's, it's hard. Um, it's hard for someone like me to, to, to get into that space, mm. you know? Uh, yeah. But, um, there you go. That's like, I don't know. Well, we're going to figure it out. So yeah, okay. <laughs> that's right. We're going to figure it out. Uh, and so the last question is, uh, what advice would you have for anybody that wants to get into this music industry? My advice would be to make sure and have some type of a, um, a living. Don't, don't go into this thinking and throw everything aside and think I'm going to make a living as a, as a star or as a musician, you, you develop your chops professionally as well so that you can make a living. And then every spare minute you have outside of what you're doing, throw into your art and your craft. And um, every single minute, uh, you know, of course, have relationships too. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? But, but you, you, you have to, you can't be, I don't care what anybody says, the, the, the artistic thing where you have only a dollar in your pocket, that that's not fun, and it's and it's not it's not a good idea, because because you're not coming to it from you're not you're not coming to it from a free place, you're coming to it from like oh my goodness how am I going to pay Con Ed tomorrow, or how am I going to you know what am I going to do for dinner, you know that's that's ridiculous, so as you're coming up if you if you're going to go to college or whatever you're going to do, be a plumber there's nothing wrong with it be be an electrician. We need them. I'm telling you, move to New York. You'll make billions of dollars. Uh, be just do something that allows you to make some money while you really while you pursue the thing that you love. And and you know, be a policeman, be a be a fire, whatever you want. Uh, do something, but you know, remember that you can um, 
you can always make time for if you really have the passion and the love of doing of, of being a musician do it that way um because it, it's it's just not it's just not really possible i think you have a better time of, uh, a better chance of hitting the lottery these days than uh, than of breaking through and making a real living uh through music you can't even be a music teacher today to be honest i have a music degree the schools don't even want music teachers anymore it's it's horrible mm. you know i mean it's it's tough so make ha, be make some money and be an artist and then if you, if, if something happens for you it's easy peasy you can make your decisions from there that's right uh, that's my that's my thought I, I i many people might not agree with me but no I, in I hindsight <laughs> yeah 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 because everybody yeah. wants to to make it and so they they want to do anything and everything to try to make it one i don't yeah. know what make it means what i don't either they, they define as making it um but let's say that they want to make it and there is the philosophy and i've heard many people on social media talk about you know if you're really serious you need to be quit your job and go full time in doing this well you're going to quit your job and you're going to struggle because you decided to quit your job and what they don't realize is that the people who are saying it still live with their mom. Yeah. See, that, or the pe- well, that's right. That's, or that's what I'm saying. So it's like, yeah, that may be great that you quit your job, but I don't want to have to struggle. I'd rather still have my job, which I do and make the money that I make, which is a whole lot and still do music because my job pays for go. all this stuff, all these lights see, and cameras see, see. and Pays for all of it. Yeah, and, and, but, and you can you can have fun, and you can have fun. fun. And if and if your show is syndicated by Spotify, well, you'll I, make a decision I, then. I'll <laughs> make a decision then. Right. That's right. Right. So, right. That's right. I'm so, with you. I'm with you. <laughs> that's this right. is good advice. If anybody anybody hears this who's thinking about it, listen to us. We're we're we're, we're speaking the truth. So we have gray. Yeah. Right. So we, we have, have gray. That's right. So listen to people who have this color gray. And that's that, right do you know that that's we, right we, we're wise that in our came ways. at a cost it that's came at a cost at, my friend it came at a cost so if you don't have it yet listen to people who have the gray so <laughs> yeah. uh, so so before we go Stephen, please tell people how they can get in contact with you and where they can check out your music well it, you know obviously i'm i'm on every platform there is but uh all things converge on my website stephenblaine.com Stephen with a V, uh, like just like it is on screen, no spaces. StephenBlaine.com, and you know my bio is there. Uh, all my um, all my links. I mean, I, I suppose the most important places. Um, I mean, if if you have any interest, would be um, my YouTube channel because it's always it's, I I post live um, uh, segments of of my performances and they're all, they're a lot of fun. I used to post the whole hour set. Now I realize if I get take one or two tunes out of there, that's great. And, um, and, it's, and it's fun. And, and I, play, I play a lot of originals and, and a lot of covers. And then, of course, you know, you could always go to Spotify. But I find out of all the services, I like Pandora the best. There's something about Pandora when, they, when they, um, the algorithm that compiles a radio station, at least for me, that music is just, I love all the songs on my radio station. Whereas Spotify, mm-hmm. um, and I know Spotify owns Pandora, which is really funny, but... Um, uh, different algorithm. So right. I'm a fan of Pandora, uh, but I'm a, I'm everywhere. I'm Apple Music, and not that it means anything uh, to me personally. I don't I don't get any checks uh, that are worthwhile. <laughs> right. Uh, so there you are. Well, well, you yeah. know, they just increased the songwriter royalty rate, so there may be some oh some checks coming somewhere. Oh yeah. Well, great. Maybe I get a cup of coffee at the end of the year. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So. <laughs> So, Stephen, it, it has been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure. Uh, if you can hold on for just one second, I will close this out, and then we can chit-chat just for a couple of seconds after that. Beautiful. All right, give me one Beautiful. Moment. Thank you, B. This is wonderful, wonderful interview. You're, you're a gentleman you, and, uh, and uh, some wonderful questions, and, uh, and I'm really honored that you would uh, choose me to, to interview. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. One moment. Ladies and gentlemen, oh my gosh, I told you, I was super excited. Now you see why learning more about Steven and learning more about his music. I was super impressed with his music, regardless of age, right? Good music doesn't have an age, right? I, I, 
I want to get people out of that mindset is that you have to be a certain age to make great music. You don't. There's no age on great music. And Steven continues to prove that. Please go check out his work. Please go to his, his website. And he has way more, <laughs> way more than The Met. The Met is the latest album, but he has, I think it's Motel Blues, which we didn't even talk about. And there's a whole bunch of other albums that are sitting up there as well. Um, but please support him. Please support support great music, right? Uh, and continue to, to support us here at We Create Music TV. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being here uh, and being part of what we do. If you find what we do to be helpful, thumbs up, right? Subscribe, share, retweet, uh, all of those things that people do to help spread the word for us so that we can continue to grow here as a TV network because that's that's ultimately what we're trying to build here at We Create Music TV, a network for music creatives. Uh, and so let us let us help help us, right? That's like that Jerry Maguire. Help us so that can come to fruition. Uh, but thank you for tuning in. Greatly appreciate it. And once again, you can catch us every uh, Monday and Thursday at 7 p.m., our interview segments. And trust me, we have a lot coming. I'm booked up with interviews until August already. Uh, so we're going to have some great music. We're going to be introduced to some great people. Uh, so stay tuned. And more content is coming. Peace.